Hello and welcome to the Green Style Sundial Legging Sew Along. I'm Sharon Aguilar, I'm your host this week and I'm so glad you're here and that you are joining me. So let's start talking about the pattern. So the pattern has um, the option of different waistbands. The legs are all the same, there are no side seam, you only have an, a crotch and an inseam and a hem on the legs, that's it. Um, on the waistband, you can have a crossover V waistband, you can have a solid waistband, you can also have a waistband where you combine the two. And that's really nice if you like the crossover function, but you need the help of holding up your leggings. Okay, so let's talk about the fabric you need. You need fabric that has at least 75% stretch in the horizontal, and then you need it to at least have 50% vertically. And the vertical stretch is what helps it go over your butt. So if you have fabric that has a lot of vertical stretch, you're gonna notice they're longer, like they actually will sit up higher on your stomach, and then you'll feel like I'm hemming these more than I normally would have been. So that's your vertical stretch. Your horizontal stretch is how comfortable they are um, width-wise. So I'm just gonna show you a few athletic fabrics, like scraps that I have on hand. So how tight your leggings feel will greatly depend on fabric. And you'll notice with fabric that has a lot of stretch, they're gonna feel looser they're gonna, than they would a fabric that has a more compressive stretch. So like this one is the green style Align. And vertically, it does not, I mean, you can get it to go to the 75% to 100, but it has a really strong snapback. So on fabrics like that, that have the really firm, strong snapback, you're going to feel they're more compressive. And those are great for if you're doing a lot of running and activities that you don't want your leggings to be slipping on. This is an athletic brush poly from the style of Magnolia. This is probably one of my hands down favorite leggings patterns. I mean, leggings like fabric that I use for tights. And you can see it has great stretch, but it also snaps back to shape really well. And that's what you want. If you stretch a fabric and you can, and it shows that impression, then it's not going to wear very well as leggings. Okay. So that's fabric. Let's, I, I want to get into a section where we talk about um, the stitching that you need for it. Okay, so I would like to talk to you about constructing the leggings, what kind of stitch you need, what kind of machine you need. I just wanna briefly chat about that. So you can use your serger or you can use a sewing machine to completely construct all of your leggings. Um, I prefer a serger, I think it's faster. I can get a stretchier seam with it. Um, so we're gonna talk about serger um, settings. But before we do, I also wanna say if you only have a regular sewing machine, you can use that as well. Um, you'll want to be able to use a stretch stitch. Um, you can use a zigzag, you can use a triple straight stitch. Just look in your manual and see what type of stretch stitches you have. Practice on scraps, and then once you've practiced, stretch that fabric and see if it stretches. If it stretches, then it'll work as leggings on your body. As well, um, if you do not have a cover stitch, you can use your sewing machine. I will be showing how you can use your twin needle to get the same look as the two lines of stitching and that seam is just as sturdy and stretches as well. I think I put off getting a cover stitch machine for several years and I made lots of leggings during that time and I still wear a lot of those leggings and I never felt like I was missing anything because I could still hem, I could still top stitch and do all of that with my regular machine. Um, I upgraded to a cover machine, cover stitch machine and I really, really am glad I am. I've really enjoyed it, but don't feel like it's necessary. I feel like it's more decorative and um, more of a luxury item than I feel it's something that I had to like, had to have. Um, okay, so let's talk about your serger and your serger settings. So on your serger, if you, before you even start, and I do this with every single pair of leggings that I make, I will use a few of my scraps and run them through my machine just to see what that seam is gonna be like. Um, let me do one really quick. Okay, so I just ran a fabric scrap I had laying around through my machine, and see, this is a nice and balanced seam. Look how the fabric isn't warped in any way. Um, so that means that my tension is correct. And you can see the stitching looks really nice. So you're gonna grab it and you're going to, you're gonna pull. And if you can pop those stitches, in your hands, you better believe you can pop those stitches when you're wearing. And um, it's different than, you know, a lot of knit fabrics. A lot of knit fabrics just don't stretch as much as athletic fabrics do. So the seam isn't required to stretch as far. Um, so I'm gonna go through some troubleshooting things that you can do. I did this as well in a Tempo Tights video. Um, so if you wanna watch that for a refresher, you can as well. Um, but here's my checklist of what I do to get my seam to be balanced for 
the particular pair of leggings that I'm sewing. So your differential, the first thing I want to talk about is your differential. You want it to be as close to neutral as possible with keeping this flat. So your differential is what's going to make a difference in whether or not this is like bowed out or wavy. So get it as close to neutral as you can without distorting this. Okay, the next one, decrease your left needle tension. So left needle tension, I notice if I'm gonna bust a seam, it's usually my left needle and it's because the tension is too tight in it. So um, I decrease it, but there is the caveat to this. If you decrease your left needle tension, then you're going to, so right now mine is at three and a half and look what happens. You're gonna see your thread through. So if you're gonna decrease your needle tension a lot, you're gonna need to top stitch those seams. So I, I decrease it only as much as I have to. So start at four, see how that one looks. If you don't have to decrease it, then don't. Um, it's also another reason why you're gonna wanna have matching thread. Okay. The next one, decrease your stitch length. If you're like, I don't wanna mess with my left needle tension at all, I don't want to see thread showing through, you can also decrease your stitch length. It's gonna be slower going through because it's taking more stitches, but since it's taking more stitches, you're gonna have more stretch in that seam. Um, another thing that some people do is they will decrease their stitch length as they're going through high pressure areas, like um, the crotch areas. They will make a, their stitch length really small just because they really don't wanna bust those seams. Um, another one is try maxi lock stretch thread. Um, I'm sure there are other makers of like wooly nylon. Um, if you put that in your loopers, then it really, really can give you just that little bit of extra stretch you need. I try and keep several colors on hand. It's more expensive as a thread. Um, I don't like using it in my cover stitch because I really can't do a reverse cover stitch with it because if that is the thread that is showing out on the right side of my leggings, then it's more likely it's going to um, like, look bad over time. It doesn't wear as well on the outside. It's really soft on the inside of a garment, but on the outside, it's not really built for like wear and tear that you might put a pair of leggings through. Okay. So I hope these four things for helped you. So I'm just going to go through my list again. One, differential as close to neutral as you can. Two, decrease left needle tension. Three, decrease stitch length. Four, try stretch thread. And if you can't get your serger to work with all four of those, then you might need to get it serviced. Oh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a fifth at the end. Change out your needles. <laughs> okay, that is all on serger tensions. If you have any questions or you need help with your particular machine, let me know. Um, I sew on a Juki, so yours might be a little bit different in what your machine likes. Um, you'll learn with different fabrics, you know, different settings to start at but always, always, always test it out on scraps because even though I've been sewing leggings for years, I kind of know what to do, I still test it out because it's really frustrating to sew an entire pair of leggings and hear that pop as you put them on. Okay, so until I got a cover stitch machine, I used a twin needle for many years and I was really happy with how it worked on hemming my knit garments. Um, my favorite kind is the 2.5, 7.5, um, it is a stretch twin needle, and um, I like this width because I feel like I get less tunneling um, since it's narrower. They do make ones that are a little bit wider, and I have some of them, um, but I just noticed that I have a better experience whenever I'm using knits that may um, tunnel, meaning that there's raised fabric between the stitching lines that um, I get that more often. So in, in order to do the twin needle, you'll just put it in your machine like you would a regular needle. Let me see. So I just hooked it in just like I would a normal needle. I didn't do anything different. Um, the only difference is, is now I'm going to need to thread. I'm going to need to put two spools of thread to thread through my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, two matching colors to thread. Oftentimes I don't have two spools of thread that are the exact same color. So I'll just thread a bobbin um, and put it on the other stand on my machine and then I'll just thread them together at the exact same time through my machine. So I just treat the two threads as one, but then whenever I get down closer to my needle at the very, very top, I'm gonna get you in closer so you can see this. At the very, very top, you will see on the left, there is a thread guide for my left needle. And then on the very right, I have a thread guide for my, my last one. So that's the only step that I do different is that I, I thread the left and then I thread the right thread guides. So here's what it looks like threaded. And now I'm gonna thread it through the needles. The one that went through the left 
thread guide, I'm gonna thread through the left needle, and then the one that went through the right thread guide, I'm gonna thread through the right needle. So whenever I do my twin needle, I notice on my particular machine that I need to increase my tension. So I usually increase my top tension as high as my machine will go. Um, it goes up to about a nine or a 10, and I'll put it um, usually like around a nine. Um, so that's one thing I do. Another thing that I need to do is I increase my stitch length. Normally I sew with about a, a 2.5 stitch straight stitch length. Um, on this one I'll sew with 3.5. So I have my tension up higher, I have my stitch length up a little bit higher, and that is the only thing I adjust there. And now I'm going to top stitch. So this is a seam that I have already surged and together. And now I'm just going to go over that machine from the top the way I would um, if I was top stitching on my cover stitch or any other machine. The fun thing on a twin needle is that you can back stitch. Um, so a cover stitch, you can't back stitch your seams, you have to tie off. But on a twin needle, you have the pleasure of actually securing your stitch. So you can see where I top stitch on the underside, there is a zigzag right through my stitching. And then on the right side, I have the parallel lines of stitching and, and it should be nice and stretchy just like your seam should be. And you can do that top stitching on any of the seams where I say I'm top stitching with my cover stitch and it's gonna be just as effective um, and sturdy. Okay, so if you have a cover stitch and you would like to reverse cover stitch your seams, I'm not gonna be showing it on any of the leggings that I made, but I do wanna just show you right here in this video. So anywhere you see me top stitching, you can also do the reverse cover stitch with your machine. So I have a seam right here, and then here's the back. So to reverse cover stitch, to get the decorative stitching on the right side of your leggings, um, whichever way you're gonna push your seam allowance, um, on this one, I'll push it to the left. And then I is how I line it up is I have my, um, whichever is the outer needle. So if I have the seam pushed to the left, then my right needle is the one that I want to go just over the edge of this seam to here. So if I had it pushed the other way, it'd be the left needle that I was trying to line up. So um, I'll, show, I'll, do, I'll do a few stitches and then I'll show you. So you don't want to pull the fabric or warp the fabric in any way. And you just wanna like, just, you're just making sure the seam is open, that it's laying flat. Okay, so you want whatever your outer needle is, you can kind of see the pink right on the outside of that seam, just following it that way. And that way that your right side looks like this. You just don't wanna see the crease um, where the fabrics meet, that's what you're trying to hide up. But then you also wanna get as much of the seam allowance itself um, stitched down so that, so like this way it's smooth. Like there's nothing that's going to be like rubbing against you or that's like flapping in the wind. So, um, I'm sure it wouldn't be flapping in the wind. So I hope that that's picking that up, the pink. So they're stitching right here, in my middle needle, and then my outer needle is right along this edge. If you accidentally get within the seam allowance a little bit, then you're going to see some of your crease sticking up. So here's an example of that. You can see right here how I didn't, I got over just a little bit and you can see it right there. It's not that obvious though. Okay, so let's talk about picking our size and measuring. So you're going to want to measure four different places on your body and um, adjust your pattern accordingly. So the first one that you're gonna take will be your waist measurement. So your waist measurement um, can be found lots of different ways. Some people will say it's the smallest part on your torso, but it might not be. Um, I usually will bend and see where I can bend, but it's right above your hip bones. So you're going to measure, measure that first. Make sure you're not wearing, like I'm wearing a bulky sweater, so I wouldn't take this wearing a bulky sweater. Maybe do it under your shirt or wear a shirt that's not um, as thick. So you're gonna take that measurement first, and then our next measurement that we're going to take will be our hip measurement. And this is going to be the widest part on your bottom that you can get. So you're gonna go, and, and also when you're doing this, make sure you're not wearing like bulky jeans or anything like that. You just wanna wear leggings or do it without pants on. 
and you'll want to get your widest measurement right here. Okay, so your next measurement is your thigh, and your thigh is not at the top. So I think naturally, since for, for a lot of people, you um, have a wider number at the top of your thigh, but it's not there. It's just right in the middle of your thigh. So right around here, I would say like at the halfway point. And then the next measurement that you're going to take will be your calf. And for me, the calf seems to be like the most important because, and oh, well, before I say that, let me just show you, it's the fullest part. So the biggest part that you can get around your calf. So the reason that I say that it's the most important for me is because my calves are always bigger on a size chart than the size that my hips would indicate. And if I just made a size that was just straight according to what my hips were or my waist was, then they would be way too tight on my calves and my pants would be sliding down constantly because they would be trying to um, accommodate for that. So, so anyway, so you're gonna wanna take each of your measurements, look at the size chart and whatever size your waist correlates to, that is the waistband that you'll want to cut out. Um, then you'll want to, for all of your hips, you'll want to cut out whatever your hip size correlates to, as well as your thigh, and then also for your calf. So you could be printing out up to four different sizes. Um, so don't get overwhelmed by thinking that that's complicated. I think that it's beautiful because it means that you can get leggings that fit you in all different spots so that they stay up, so that they're comfortable, so that they function the way that they're supposed to. I'm gonna um, go in and show you how I adjust the pattern, so um, so how I can grade from different sizes, as well as to adjust for height. So if your inseam is lower than about 29 to 30 inches, then I'm gonna show how to adjust for that, or if it's greater, you'll want to accommodate that so that your legs, um, that they fit you where they're supposed to. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you have, need help adjusting the pattern for your specific um, size. If when you're adjusting um, like your waistband, so like if your waist and your hips are maybe just one size off, I don't think you need to grade the top of your pants to fit that because um, because it's, it's stretchy fabric you're working with, so it's really not that necessary. But if you're like, let's say you're going up two or more sizes, you will want to grade the top of your leggings to fit that bigger waistband. Another thing to think about is if your waist is much larger than your hips, then you might want to do the solid front waistband or add it to the um, to the crossover because it will help your pants to stay up more. Um, I notice, like with the crossover waistband like that, it doesn't have elastic in it, um, so it's more likely to slide down and it helps if you have a waist size that's a lot smaller than your hips because it kind of just sits on top of your hips and, it, and that your hip bones kind of help it to stay up. But if that's not the case for your particular body shape, having that contour of waistband underneath the crossover, the solid waistband, will really help give you that extra tummy control and help them to stay up the way they need to because you can put elastic in the seam of the, um, the solid waistband, but you can't in the crossover waistband. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into a section where I'm gonna show you how to adjust the pattern um, for your particular shape. I am going to be cutting out my pattern and I wanted to show you how I um, remove length. It works the same for adding. So if you need to adjust your legs for your height, also as well as how to grade. If your um, thigh or your calf fall into different sizes, then maybe your hips do. So this is the main legs pattern piece and you have your mid rise at the top and then you have your high rise. So just depending on how high you want your waistband as well, in addition to those, you have a lengthen or shorten rise line right here where you can draw a line directly across and you can either add to it by um, spreading your paper apart or you can subtract to it by drawing another line that is exactly parallel to the first and um, putting it together to make it shorter um, than the two that are on here. So I'm going to start with removing a length from the legs. When I'm going to make height adjustments, I don't cut the pattern out until after I have made the adjustments that I need. Um, so the first thing I'm going to need is a ruler and then some kind of a pen or a pencil to mark on it with. So the first thing I'm going to do, my daughter, um, I measured her inseam. This is for her. 
and hers is 26 inches and the pattern inseam let's see it shows to be 28 but there's also vertical stretch on the fabric that you use so it's going to be more like 29 or 30 once finished so i'm going to remove three inches for her and to do that i'm going to start at the lengthen or shorten line right here you also want to pay attention when you're laying your ruler out that it's nice to have the rulers with grid lines that go both directions because you want to line up your ruler with the grain line as well as line it up with the length and shorten line. And I'm just going to draw a line straight across that length and shorten line so that it goes throughout the entire leg. And then I'm going to draw, since I'm removing three inches for her, I'm going to remove an inch and a half from the thigh and then an inch and a half from the calf so that it, you don't want it to be all in one place. Just, I mean, Unless you have like really long thighs and short calves, then of course you would want to remove it all in your calves. Um, one way to determine that is to check. You see the knee place is right above where it says the calf accommodation. So you could measure with a tape measure, the pattern, measure where the knee is from the rise to here. And then you could also measure from here to here and see how the distribution compares to your particular measurements. Um, but on hers, I'm just going to remove an inch and a half from both because she's not awkward. Like her distribution levels are not uneven. I drew a line that is one and a half inches away from the length and shorten line. Now I'm going to go and do the same thing in the calf area. There's a length and shorten line at the bottom. And I'm going to draw right there and then I'm going to draw a line that is an inch and a half. So now I'm going to cut these apart. So to do that I'm going to get a pair of paper scissors <laughs> and I'm just going to cut on one of the lines. Now if you are adding to yours because you're longer than a 29 to 30 inch inseam then you're going to spread these apart and put paper underneath them. So if you needed to add an inch or two inches, then you'd spread them apart by the amount that you need to add. Well, since I'm removing, I'm going to bring this up right here. So I'm gonna connect this line with this line up here. And I wanna do it evenly. So you notice, so you're not necessarily trying to line up the, the, the center, you're trying to line up these edges. So you want them, the same amount that these lines are away, I want these lines to be away from each other. Because you don't want your leg to be like this. You want it to be as centered underneath the other as you possibly can get it. So it's kind of, I'm just going to kind of eyeball. So this is what this one looks like on the edges now that it's together. You can see, so I have size C and size D printed out for her. Um, the reason I printed si two sizes is because her calf, um, I need to go up in her calf. So you can see how my size C and my size D lines, um, they met right here when I removed that length. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing on the calf. I'm going to cut across one line. It doesn't matter which line you cut across. And then I'm going to take the part I cut out and then meet the second line that I drew. can see what that looks like where I connected those. So now I'm going to do this with a marker first so you can see how I'm going to cut this out before I cut it out. So I'm going to, her hip size is the smaller one. It's the size C. So I'm going to go along this hip size and then as I get closer there and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to draw. That's what it's going to look like when I cut that part out. So I'm going to gradually go to the other size. Now if I had like if her thighs were bigger then this would be so easy because all I would need to do was just connect it to the next size. But since her thighs are in the exact same size I need to grade. I need to make sure that I cut down to the next size. So like it's actually really easy for my myself when I'm cutting out my pattern because my thighs are one size bigger than my hips so I just automatically connect those lines and there's no grading for me whatsoever um, when I remove. But for her I need to go back down to 
her size on the thigh. Now, whenever I get to the calf, I'm gonna keep cutting out her C, but when I get to her calf area, I'm gonna go for the D. Okay, so this looks like what I'm going to cut out. Do you see how I gave her extra room in her calves? And you know, I, once I sew these up, I'll try them on and I'll see if she has extra fabric somewhere. Um, one thing that really shows you, um, if you have baggy, a lot of bagginess in your knees, it shows you you didn't remove enough length that your the calf part is hitting too low on them. Um, that because this knee part should be skinnier. Um, so where the skinnier part is um, should be at the knee. So if you have that bagginess pulling under the knees and that's extra fabric from your thighs that you need to even take more out at this length and shorten line up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut out my pattern piece. Um, for her, she has a lot more room in her backside than she does in her front. Every time I've ever made leggings for her, I have to adjust the front rise. So on this one, I'm actually gonna do I'm gonna try something unique. Let's hope this works out. I'm going to cut the high rise for her back and then I'm going to go down to the mid rise for her front. So I'm gonna make that custom adjustment for her. Um, let's see how that works out. Okay, I'm gonna cut this pattern out. I want to show you the patterns I have cut out. This one is mine. This one's for my daughter. For me, I did from D, E to an F with the high rise. I didn't need to make any adjustments to my rise, but I did need to grade um, for once I hit the D crotch point, then I came out to the next size for my thighs. It was easy because I was removing length and it just so happened that I connected those next lines whenever I removed length right there. And then I went all the way down um, until when I removed length at the calf that um, I ended up going to, I started going to the F once I got underneath the knee right here. Um, so anyway, so that's mine. And then I removed a half inch from the bottom. Um, then my daughter's looks like this on hers. You can see how I tried to make my lines as gradual as possible when grading. You don't wanna make sharp turns. You wanna try and draw as smoothly as possible. It's nice sometimes to just to use a marker ahead of time so you can kind of judge what it looks like with the marker and you haven't cut away um, the, fab the paper. Okay, so now I'm ready. Um, now I just need to cut two mirror images of this. Let me show you now what it's like to fold your fabric to cut the mirror images. So I have a yard of, this is a fabric from Joanne. Um, this is the wrong side and then this is the right side of the fabric. You see here's the selvage right here. You can, whenever you're cutting athletic fabric, sometimes you'll have fabric that is actually stretchier along the selvage, but usually it's stretchier crossways like this. So when it's stretchier crossways like this, you're gonna wanna fold it to where your fold runs parallel to your selvage. Um, if you have, sometimes you'll get panels to where they're printed with the print going this way. And in that case, then you can fold it, then you can fold it like this and cut your your legs out like that. Then you'll need, usually you'll need more than a yard and a half. Whenever, whenever it's like that, I like to have more than a yard um, of fabric to work with. So anyways, now you're going to find your grain line. This is super important when you're cutting out your leggings. If you accidentally twist it a little like this to where it's and cut your legs out like this, then there's a possibility your inseam will also twist around your leg. Um, so this keeps it the inseam going straight down your leg. And it's how you find the grain line is there's these little ridges. They're hard to see on this print. Let me see if I can show, find a solid. Here's a really good example because you can see the ribs on this fabric. It's the green style rib knit. And when you fold, you're gonna wanna get as close close up look to your fabric as possible so that you're folding those grain lines. They're running completely parallel down where you fold your fabric. So you're going to want to fold it like that and then cut out both legs at the exact same time. The next thing that's really important now that I have my fabric folded on the grain line is that the leggings pattern piece is um, going along with the grain line. So that means that I'm gonna take my ruler and lay it across and find the grain line that's printed on the pattern 
and make sure that it's running up and down with these lines. And if it's not, you'll wanna move your pattern piece to get it to run up and down those lines. Once it is, get something to hold your pattern piece down and then we are ready to cut it out. Okay, so that is everything for day one. Um, we went over what size to pick. Um, I've talked about different stitches that you can use on your machine. Um, if there's anything I haven't covered that you don't feel prepared to start sewing, reach out to me and hopefully I can help you. Um, also, so throughout the videos, uh, over the next two, three, four, five days, I'll have a video outlining each step. So I might not show each of these variations in the video, like how to top stitch with a twin needle or how to top stitch using reverse cover stitch. So just use the, that information from this video when you watch those. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Thank you and I'll see you tomorrow.